You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. So what do you look for on an AP pelvis in patients that you're concerned for that may have a pelvic ring injury? So I think the natural thing that all of our eyes go to is looking at asymmetry. And so if you, for those of you following the PowerPoint, if you can see the image on the right side, you can see that the left side hemipelvis of this patient is dramatically different than the right side. And so the asymmetry is what your eyes always be drawn to. Your eyes are always drawn to the most obviously different thing, whether that be fracture or ligamentous disruption as is in this case. But as you start looking at the details more, start looking at everything, look at the soft tissues, because you can still see the soft tissues on plain film x-rays and ensure that the densities all look normal to you and that the bowel is where you think it should be because sometimes it won't be. And also if there's a Foley or if there's contrast in the bladder, the displacement of the particularly a contrast filled bladder will give you clues as to where the injury is because the bleeding is what's deforming that bladder and pushing it to one side or the other. The other thing of course is looking at the ligament and structures and the joints that you're concerned about. So the symphysis, the symphysis here is clearly completely disrupted. But then if you can actually draw your attention to the right side sacroiliac joint, if you look at the caudal facet, right where the arrow is right there, that ends up being a lot of times your best marker for the displacement, instability, and also your reduction uh, once you take these people to the operating room, because that's a more densely corticated region that usually is seen better on imaging. And you can see that if you compare it to the injured side, that that's com that relationship is completely disrupted. And so that also is usually a marker of a complete injury as opposed to an incomplete injury. And is there any any telltale signs as far as flexion versus extension of a hemi pelvis? I know some, at least one of our another one of our attendings here, Dr. Martin, will, will say, you know, you can look at the obturator frame and, and see if they're not symmetric, just like you're saying, you look for symmetry. If they're not symmetric, then maybe one that can kind of clue you in towards one hemi pelvis is maybe flex versus extended. Um, so do you, do you look at that as well? Yeah, of course. So actually, I would say that there may be a slightly easier way to do that. So if okay. you look at the, in this patient, the L5, uh, sorry, L4, L5 disc space, and then the relationship of the ilium in reference to that relatively horizontal line. And so you can see that the left side hemipelvis is cranially displaced in comparison to the right side in reference to that horizontal line that you can draw on most imaging software. And so that usually will tell you that there's some vertical instability. And if you look, draw, continue to draw markers, whether it be from the top of the ilium to the top of the ilium, the source seal, the dome of the acetabulum to the contralateral dome of the acetabulum, the ischium, whatever markers of symmetry you want to use, if all of those lines are at the same level, then the symmetry is maintained. If they're at different levels, then the symmetry is disrupted in some way. If they're all uniformly disrupted cranial, then it's vertically unstable. But if the ilium are at the same level, but the ischium or the source seals are at different levels, that's usually a sagittal plane rotational deformity as opposed to true vertical instability. 